Good evening. Hello. Hello. You? <laughs> You're okay? Yeah, Comfortable? Yeah, yes, okay. yeah. Yes. You just said, I heard you say that uh, you shot the movie in 2014. Yeah. D you is that right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a big blur. What is it now? 2016. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah I did, yeah. And um, when did you know, when did you knew it was finished? Um, what, in terms of date or how did we tell it was finished? Yeah, that, the last, the last one. Um, well, you know, the films usually tell us. So you keep cutting them and then, then you get to a point where you're happy with it and then you stop, you know. Then you show it to everyone and then they all cry. <laughs> <laughs> and then you go, I'm not going to change it, and that's it. So that's kind of what happened, yeah. And is it because uh, you, you made a lot of work, is it every time the same kind of feeling of happiness you feel? I wouldn't say it's happiness. I don't know. It's not like a joy. <laughs> it's not like a kind of overwhelming joy. No, you're excitement. just sat satisfied. It's a fight, you know, you mm -hmm. fight it and you battle it, and then eventually it, it kind of surrenders to you a bit. Um, and then you need a bit of distance from it and you look at it again. I mean, we, Amy and I, when we cut this, I think we watched it every day for like three months and we'd get up in the morning, watch it and then edit it all day long, go back, you know, and there were really long days. Um, I think as the, our son was going to school and we kind of, we'd get up in the morning really early and then take him to school and then, then we did it while he was at school. And then he'd come back from school, and then we wouldn't be able to edit again until like seven o'clock, eight o'clock at night. And we'd edit through till four or three in the morning, and then start again. And it was that, you know. So we were exhausted by the time we finished it. Not that that, you know, it's not like digging a hole or building a <laughs> building a bridge or something or a real <laughs> building job. a high but rise. It was, but it was quite. Yeah. You know, it was and quite hard. how long did the editing took? God, I don't know. I think about three or four months. It wasn't, you know, it wasn't long in the scheme of some movies, but. Um, and there was only two of us doing it, so we usually edit it at home. So yeah. it's kind of. Um, uh, I was reading a thing about uh, was it the uh, Reds? You seen that film? The the the. Um, oh, what's his name? Um, was it? Uh, yeah. Rowan Beatty's yeah. Reds. Yeah. So Reds, they they yeah. shot. This was actually on sightseers, but they, on on they, we shot the same amount of rushes as they shot on Reds for sightseers, and they. Um, and he had a team of a hundred people or something, oh <laughs> and a whole massive house because the film was so big and all this, and, and we just have like a hard drive which has got all the rushes in. So you, can, you, know, you don't need loads of people anymore to, to cut stuff. Yeah. And the film is situated in the 70s. Mm. You were uh, a kid yeah. during that time. Is there a lot of uh, uh, from your own memory in it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, I, you know, the look of it, and I mean, that was quite important to both Amy and I that uh, and working with Mark Tilsley, who's the designer on it, that we had a feeling of the of 70s, which was uh, this, you know, a lot of stuff, I've seen a lot of art directed stuff of the 70s, where they, what they tend to do is get the greatest hits of the 70s and throw them in, and that's what the 70s looked like. But the 70s is a, at that point was in a culmination of stuff going back to, for most people, going back to the war, you know, so there was lots of old crap in there as well. Yeah. So it's a, you know, so we tried to make sure that it wasn't all just brand new 70s stuff. And, and the other way we looked at it was that I find that if you look to the, look at Design Magazine now, and you look through it, you won't see anything that you know at all. But in 40 years time when they get that, when they're making the film about now, they get that mag out and they'll go, yeah, there's that chair. And everyone had these, didn't they? And then, then all of a sudden it doesn't look like yeah. the, the reality. So we kind of, um, yeah, we were a bit particular about that. It was because the production design is amazing. Yeah. There, it's absolutely mind blowing. And is that a tour around the world to search for all these details? I can't even imagine what a hell of a job that must be. Yeah, I mean, it. it, it it was great fun because we, it was the first film we've made that, that we've had any kind of control, big control over that stuff. Like most stuff, most of the movies we made up, up until High Rise had been in lo on location. So you'd go and find a place and then you'd have to you'd dress it a bit, but you wouldn't get con total control over it. Whereas this, you can control the colour of everything. And, you know, we had a big design team so we could design all the books all the covers of every book and you know in the supermarket every can of beans was designed as well so you know that was yeah it was quite a thing yeah I can imagine it's pretty cool yeah I mean I, for me it's like total filmmaking you know where where you get to build sets and 
you know, it's a little thing. You think it, everyone gets to do it, but it's <laughs> taken me five movies no. to get to that position. You know. And it's based, of course, on the novel. Was it uh, difficult um, for you to find your own voice and also forget about the novel? No, I mean, I, I, it, I think that the, I mean, I dealt, Amy dealt with the novel more. So I dealt with her script. So I, I, you know, by the by, by the time we were making the movie, I'd I'd, I'd moved, stepped beyond, stepped away from the, the book as much as I could because because it's another set of issues, is, yeah. you know, working with the script. And then um, I did a lot of drawing and a lot of storyboarding and kind of conversations with uh, Mark Tilsley and Laurie Rose and uh, the DOP. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, I think I, you know, that you could go into it and say, oh, the, the weight of adapting a, a famous novel like this could be you know distracting and but I, I don't know what that says about me but I wasn't that, it didn't, didn't worry me overly you know at the time obviously now when we, when we're actually showing the film to people the the, 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 the slight inkling of, of pissing off Ballard fans is a bit oh. more worrying but but they actually um, from what we've heard people like it you know that we you know we really tried to make it as close to the book as we could without it being like five hours long yeah. you know, so, <laughs> Um, and, and honor the book as much as we could. So I think we've, you know, we've done that. Yeah, and you already mentioned you made uh, a lot of work. You also made uh, animation, commercials, TV series. How does all that experience help you in uh, this film and your work now? Um, well, TV helps me because it, it means that it was learning how to deal with things under pressure, time pressure and stuff. So you know, how to block a scene and, and get through it and know that you've got enough coverage and not freak out and think, oh, I've got the shots I need. And I learned that from t doing TV, um, and making decisions quickly and sticking to them. Um, but also that comes from editing as well as an editor, so I, can, I know when I'm shooting stuff what, how exactly it's going to cut together. And I can see in my mind's eye how it cuts so I don't have to worry as much as other people kind yeah. of over cover stuff because of that. Um, Animation, I don't know. I mean, I was never a very good animator. I was looking back at some of my old stuff and, and was surprised how terrible it was. You know, in my mind's eye, it was really beautiful. And I watched it and went, wow, I hope no one ever sees this again. But I was only an animator out of, um, you know, because I, I, it was too complicated to organize doing shoots with real people. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, I think being self reliant is really important. And, um, uh, uh, but I, I tend to have a kind of, a, I need to make stuff all the time. So if, I, if I'm just left alone in a room with a pencil and a piece of paper, I'll be drawing and doing stuff. So I think that was, that's part of it. Is it difficult because it's so detailed? Every shot is so detailed, there's so much to see uh, that it's uh, difficult that you said you work with real people. Mm. Can it also be a burden because they are people and they make mistakes? And uh, no, because I'm not like a filmmaker. I'm not, it's not like, um, like Kubrick or something, you know. <laughs> oh, that sounds terrible, doesn't it? It's not. It's not like it's not so planned that it has to be exactly. You know, I have an idea in my head, and then I kind of try and desperately try to do it, and I'll punish them all if they don't go to the marks and stuff. You know, I love actors, and I love to see what they've got to do. You know, so I, I, I plan it as much as I can, and then we rehearse it and see what they do, and then we set the cameras up according to that. And a lot of the time, they're allowed to move around and do whatever they want to a degree within character. Um, so I don't try and, you know, I'm not, it's not like a world of like very strict marks and, and I tell them an actor out and go, this is like this, you know, I don't, you know, because it's like I'm not an actor, I'm no good at it, so why would I employ these people who are brilliant and then tell them what to do, it seems crazy. Is um, it the longer you work, the better the actors get you get to work with? No. No? <laughs> Actors are good at all. St movie stars are a different thing from a actors in a way, and it's like you know the guys I work with at the beginning in Down Terrace are as good as anyone I'm working with now, but it's just different like levels of exposure. But at the end of the day, when you're in the in the room with them, they're all actors and they have to act, and you know, and all those skills and, and things come together with that. So, yeah, I wouldn't say that they're you know better, but they're they're kind of. No, they're really good, yeah. but they've always been really yeah, good, yeah, all yeah. the people I've worked with. You know. And was it uh, was it childhood dream to make the Doctor Who episodes? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I, well, I, I don't know if it's a childhood dream, because I probably wouldn't have realised it when I was a child, because I would have thought Doctor Who was real, yeah. you know. But um, when I, uh, as I got older, I thought, yeah, I'd like to, I wonder if it's possible to do that, you know. And I talked to my agent, and he kind of looked around and said, oh, maybe. Um, and over time, you know, I think it was Sightseers which did it. You know, they saw Sightseers and they liked it. And, um, but also, my son was 10 around that time. And so the chance to 
take him on to the TARDIS and stuff, oh. and he was a massive Doctor Who fan, so that, that all came together really well, you know, so... Um, yeah, he went uh, to the set with you? Yeah, 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 yeah. so, you know, it's, uh, and, you know, it, it was exciting doing that and blowing Daleks up and... Do you, do you share the uh, love for science fiction? Well, w with who? With your, your son. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah? I mean, I, you know, I've always liked science Why? Tell science me. Why, why this love? Um, I don't know. I mean, I, I remember, uh, I guess it might come from watching Buster Crab stuff as a kid. You know, we used to, the Buster Crab was in the original Flash Gordon um, serial episodes, and, and, uh, and he also was Buck Rogers as well, I think. And they used to show them on TV in the UK in, um, in the mornings. Um, and that's basically what Star Wars is all taken from those, those things with all the wipes that go from side to I side and the spaceships coming out and all that. And uh, yeah, I just used to love it, you know. And, um, uh, but also like this, again, going back to what you're saying about like having total control, you know, creating worlds completely from scratch is really exciting. And, and you, you can go, you, thinking about this recently, we've been talking about high rise and stuff and the idea of like, you know, things in the past and things in the future are basically the same thing. You know, it's another way of looking at now, only distancing it enough so that people can think it's not a directly a criticism of them and then they can come to a decision about what they think about it. Um, and I think that's what the best science fiction is and what the best period stuff is, you know, when I watch it and go, all oh, right, yeah, it's, it's about us, but it's not, not pointing the finger too much. You know? And you already watched it when you were a kid yourself? What, science fiction? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 I've, you know, yeah, Doctor Who and Star Trek and all that stuff. And I remember Star Wars coming out when I was little and, you know, I saw that in 77 when it came out. Well, actually, it would have been 78 in the UK because it came out in December and I wouldn't have seen it until a few months yeah. afterwards, but yeah. And is it because the, the film is situated in the high rise, like big building for residential living? Is it, uh, have you lived in a high rise building yourself? No. No? no. It's, it's all made up. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> yeah, I didn't, I didn't go and live in one like Robert De Niro did on R Raging Bull, <laughs> loads of pasta. Yeah. And was it because the locations, because I really like the production design and the locations as well. Mm. Um, and I saw there is, it's located in England and in... No, it's, well it's, it's in Bangor in Northern Ireland and, and Belfast. So what happened was we went around the country trying to find anywhere that it was that period stuff and, that, and we found that it had all been knocked down or modernised or they were like universities and they were in use all the time so you couldn't use them. Um, and then we found this sports centre in Bangor, which was built in 73, 74, and it was um, uh, built next to a police station. In a, in a, a, and, the, and it hadn't been renovated at all, and it had been closed down, so it hadn't been vandalised because it was next to a police station. We went in and went, wow, this is it. So we built a lot of the sets inside the sports centre, um, but then we used its swimming pool, its squash courts and yeah, corridors cool. and stuff. So it felt real, you know, it had the real proportions of, of, the, of the period yeah, building yeah. without, you know, the art department going crazy. Yeah. And <laughs> is there a lot of use of the green screen? Actually not. Actually not? No. I mean, what we did was we got a scenic painter to paint the no. sky. Yeah, yeah. And we got away with it mostly, I think. Um, mm. So the, when they're outside, there's, yeah, obviously that's all a bit more built, you know, but it's more matte painting stuff than it is green screen. Cool, interesting. So what's next? Uh, Free Fire, which we've just finished, kind of, almost. Which is um, 70, 1970s again, um, but in Boston in America. Um, and some, uh, a group of guys come from Ireland to buy guns. Um, and they meet up in this warehouse. And then there's an argument, and it goes wrong, and everyone gets shot. <laughs> and then that's like the first 20 minutes. And then everyone's on the ground going, <laughs> and the rest of the film is them crawling, <laughs> crawling around, trying to survive as they bleed to death. Oh so no. it's a comedy. Is this a spoiler alert? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how to pitch it otherwise. Yeah, but it's like a, it's like a thriller that never starts. You think, oh, it's gonna, oh, <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> but it's uh, yeah, it's got loads of action in it, and it's funny, and it's um, uh, was it Brie Larson's in it from Room, yeah. and. Um, Charlton Copley, Army Hammer, Killian Murphy, um, and uh, Jack Rayner. I think loads of people. So and is a festival like this uh, useful for you to meet other people, make new collaborations? Um, 
I don't know about new collaborations because I kind of go in and go straight up. <laughs> well, we saw you talking to somebody. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm doing loads of you know interviews, but I'm going to. Um, I'll uh, you know I'll have a drink with Steve Oram tonight, but then I'm the exec producer <laughs> on R, so it's not much of a, <laughs> a meeting of minds. But I, yeah, I mean, I, I, Rotterdam has um, supported us since the first film, since Down Terrace, and it was the first major festival I ever went to, really. And um, and also it was the first festival that we got a film into that wasn't someone that we kind of knew. You know, we got we got into Fantastic Fest, and that was because and not because, but part, we they. Andy Stark, my producer, kind of knew Tim League and all those guys. But Rotterdam for us was a punt where we just sent the d film in and then we got in <laughs> really surprised, you know. <laughs> Don't tell them. <laughs> it was great, you know. We were like, wow, I can't believe we got in. And so I came, I remember coming here and, um, and I sat in the whole movie in there and the audience was really warm and laughed all the way through. So I was like, wow, this is great, you know. And so, you know, I've always had a good time here. Thanks. Thanks for your time. Cheers. And Thank enjoy you. tonight.